good morning guys you able to hear me all loud and clear good morning uh, jayant good morning pooja i hope everybody else will uh, join uh, shortly good morning uh, jayant <coughs> okay we're going to continue the discussion today from uh, where we stopped in the last class and uh, guys this is uh, ranganath nesvin kondra your faculty and uh, on this particular youtube channel i'm doing a series of um, prelims questions and uh, we're going to discuss uh, prelims mcqs of indian history and slowly eventually from tomorrow we're going to also add up international relations and then after two days we're going to add uh, economy after two days we're going to add slowly slowly we're going to increase we will be doing a full length mcqs uh, from pretty much next week okay good morning prabhuna good morning bath <laughs> so those who are not a part of my telegram channel do join the telegram group plus students and also follow my website and follow me on youtube now let us see the first question for the day which of the following dances is or are uh, in the unesco intangible heritage list kuchpudi bharatanatyam chau odissi and as the tradition goes do put your answers or do your put your options on uh, in the chat box good morning neeraj good morning good morning answers 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 <laughs> Okay, Prapurna, Jayant, uh, Nirpath, okay, Parth says C, Prapurna says C, answer is a C. Of the total 14 intangible cultural heritage elements from India, which have been inscribed under UNESCO's World Heritage List, Chow Dance is part of the 2010 list. Chow is primarily in bengali style actually it was a originally folk dance form or a folk theater form so mainly popular in bengal region and uh, it has multiple types purulia chow uh, uh, saraikara chow and all that <laughs> but sangeet Arya academy does not categorize chow as a classical dance in ministry of culture's website it has been categorized as a classical dance and is part of UNESCO's World Heritage List, I mean, so UNESCO's List of Intangible Heritage. Okay, good morning Kunal, good morning Prithi. So, the other intangible cultural um, uh, heritage elements, basically intangible essentially means those which are not calculable, it was not measurable, those which are not measurable, calculable or countable, those are called intangible heritage elements. The traditional Vedic chantings, Ram Leela, the traditional performance of Ramayana, Kutiyatam, the Sanskrit theatre, Rama and the religious festival and the ritual theatre of Garhwal, Himalayas, India, Muriet, ritual theatre and dance drama of the region of Kerala, Kalbelia, folk songs and dance of Rajasthan, Buddhist chantings of Ladakh, Sankirtana of Manipur, the ritual singing style of Manipur, Manipur is Sankirtana. The brass and copper craft utensil making traditions of the Thatiras in Jandiala Guru Punjab, Yoga, Navroz Iranian New Year Festival, Kumbh Mela and Durga Puja. These are the list of intangible cultural heritage from India for UNESCO. In India, which one of the following is the nodal body coordinating with UNESCO for matters relating to intangible cultural heritage? Archaeological Survey of India, Geological Survey of India. Sangeet Narag Academy, National Museum. Good morning, Archini. <coughs> mm. okay. Answer, answer, answer.
the nodal body which works with UNESCO for intangible it's a Sangeet Nath Academy. It's actually a nodal agency under the Ministry of Culture, works directly under the Ministry of Culture. of government of india <laughs> and uh, primarily in the matters relating to intangible cultural heritage and various unesco convention addressing cultural diversity and promotions and dissemination of multifarious cultural traditions and expressions of the country unesco nodal agency in india is sangeet Nath academy under which itself directly comes under the ministry of culture consider the following statements barfu khan was the post equivalent of governor general creator in ahom kingdom battle of sarai Khat was a naval battle between mughal empire and ahom kingdom of the brahmaputra river which of the above statements these are correct the morning puja Which are the following statements? These are all correct. Mm. <coughs> Good morning, Kavita Dadwal. So, Lachit Borfukan, right? Borfukan is actually equivalent to the office of governor which was created during the in the Ahom Kingdom. Answer is C, the British era. In the recently British era Bangla and Hilot that has been used in the 17th century military office of the Ahom rulers has been converted into a heritage structure depicting life along the Brahmaputra river recently. Wo sequence mein hai, this question came. Borpu Khan was the post equivalent to Governor General created by Ahom King Pratap Sinha or Susen Pa. The hill fort or the hillock by the Brahmaputra river mentioned in ancient scriptures as Madranchal. Madranchal. <coughs> was where Ahom General Lachit Borfukhan launched the Battle of Saraighat. See, the Battle of Saraighat remains one of the most important events in the history of Ahom and history of relations between Ahom and the Mughals. Saregat is regarded as the greatest naval battle ever fought in a river and uh, in this battle Ahom actually won, defeating the Mughals. Consider the following statements regarding Satras of Assam. Satras are monastic institutions created as part of the 16th century neo vaishnavite reformist movement started by the Vaishnava saint reformers Srimanta Shankaradeva and during Ahom reign most of the satras along Assam were actually destroyed. These satras were established as centers of religious, social and cultural reforms. Which of the above statements is or are correct about the satras? 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 1 and 3, 1, 2 and 3. Type your answers, type your answers, good, 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 type your answers. Do not miss it, do type your answers. The answer is... C. 1 and 3 only. Oh. Ahom is actually propagated and helping in the propagation of uh, Vaishnavism. Satras were basically monastic institutions associated with neo vaishnavist movement, reformist movement started by Vaishnava Saint Reformer 
Srimanta Shankaradeva. She is actually his followers who started the classical dance Satariya, no? Mm. As uh, Shankaradeva traveled across the sun, spreading his teachings and propagating a completely egalitarian, equality based society, these satras or thans were established as centers of religious, social and cultural reforms. Today, satras are spread across the state, promulgating Shankaradeva's unique worship through art format. Approach to music, basically Borgi. They sing Borgi. And uh, they also dance in Satariya and uh, theatre called Bhavna. During a home region, in fact, Satariya and Satras got full fledged support by the kings of Aham. In fact, they got donations, propagation, moral. Economic and political support from the kings of Ahom. Next question. Which one of the following declares your heritage sites or national geological monuments for the protection and maintenance in India? Survey of India, Archaeological Survey of India, Geological Survey of India, none of the above. But who declares uh, geo heritage sites? Who declares them? Good morning, Anadi. Namaskaram. Good morning, Miss Ki. Ah, okay. Your heritage is it is Geological Survey of India. This was actually a heart attack. Malalana. If, if you, you had attended, attended one of my previous current affairs classes of the February 2023, sorry, Jan December 2023, you would have uh, remembered this. It is actually the Geological Survey of India, which has been given the right under uh, certain provisions to declare national geological monuments for protection and maintenance. The state wise detail. Are actually, actually given in annexure GS Geological Survey of India or the respective state governments take all the necessary measures mainly to protect these geological sites or geo heritage sites. They protect glacial, coastal, red sand dunes of Isaac, and uh, the geological heritage is spread across an area of approximately 20 square kilometers and is primarily popularly known as. Eramati Dibalu. Eramati means red mud. Dibalu means dunes or uh, red, red sand dunes. This, this was recently declared declared as a geoheritage site by Geological Survey of India in 2014. Archaeological sites, no? Puja. Archaeological sites, ancient monuments, ASI. Geoheritage sites, Geological Survey of India. <coughs> In, In fact, fact Vaisak once, the Eramati Dibalu, about 80,500 80, years old, and is living scientific evolution site which, which depicts real time effects of climate change. change. It, it represents late quaternary geological age. Red sand dunes have been uh, reported only from three places in the tropical regions of South Asia Teri Sands in Tamil Nadu, Visakapatnam, Eramati Dibalu, and one more site in Sri Lanka. There, there are only three, three sites, sites like this. Sri Lanka, Lanka which is Andhra Pradesh, and, and Tamil Nadu. The, the term Panchatirth includes which of the following places associated with the R. Ambedkar? Guys, is the sound echoing? Is, is there an echo? Yeah. Just one, one second. second. Now? 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 
Now there is no echo, right? Now there is no echo, right? Oh, very good. Bada, ha, Panchatit, which are the following places are associated with B.R. Ambedkar? Panchatit. Janma Bhumi, Ambedkar's birthplace. Tiksha Bhumi, a place in London where Ambedkar stayed while studying. Diksha Bhumi, where Ambedkar embraced Buddhism. Chaitya Bhumi, where Ambedkar's demise. <coughs> Mahaparinirvana Bhumi, a place of Ambedkar's creation. Bada, which one of the following statements is correct? Answer, 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 answer. If the echo restarts, please do tell me. Okay, okay. Answer is B. <laughs> <coughs> One, two, three. Chaitya Bhumi is the place of Ambedkar's creation. Mahaparinirvana Bhumi is the place of Ambedkar's demise or death. Mahaparinirvana Divas, no? Ambedkar's death day. Right? Pooja Jain, I say hota hai. I'll tell you why I, why I ask this question. Ambedkar statue opened in Telangana. Ambedkar statue also opened in uh, Maharashtra. A lot of Ambedkar, Ambedkar was happening over the last six months. Statue ke baare mein koi nahi puchega. Aise ajeeb chee se puchhenge. That is UPSC. The government has first proposed Ambedkar circuit or Panch Tirth in 2016. Panch Tirth is basically a travel plan which includes... Janma Bhumi, which is Ambedkar's birthplace in Madhya Pradesh, Mao region. Uh, Siksha Bhumi, the place where Ambedkar studied in UK. Diksha Bhumi, the place in Nagpur where he embraced Buddhism. Mahaparinirvana Bhumi, where he sort of demise or died. And uh, Chaitya Bhumi is a place where his cremation was done in Mumbai. Yes. Yes, Pavan. Yes. Mahaparinirvana essentially means the uh, Samadhi in Buddhism. That is why the day when Ambedkar died is generally referred to as Mahaparinirvana Divas. We observe it as Mahaparinirvana Divas. Okay. Got it? Now next question. With reference to religious history of India, consider the following statements. The concept of Bodhisattva is central to Hinayana sect of Buddhism. Bodhisattva is a compassionate one on his way to enlightenment. Bodhisattva delays achieving his own salvation to help all sentient beings on their path to it. Bodhisattva. Which of the following statements about is or are correct? One only, two and three only, two only, one, two and three only. Answer, guys. Amethi Shiva Chandala Madhya Mamshati Doshita. Amethi Shiva Chandala Madhya Mamshati Doshita. Answer must be two and three. Mahayana Buddhism, in fact, idol worship, Bodhisattva, ritualism, spiritual worship, all of these are central theories of Mahayana style of Buddhism, not Hinayana. In non-Mahayana Buddhism, which is Hinayana, it is usually referred to Maitreya, the Buddha of future, or the historical Buddha Gautama prior to his enlightenment. So, they believe in presence of Gautama. And uh, also a future Buddha who is going to come called Maitreya. <laughs> Bodhisattva is literally a sattva or a living being who aspires to enlightenment or Bodhi. 
carries out altruistic practices or basically lives a life as suggested by Buddha. Bodhisattva ideal is central to Mahayana Buddhist tradition as the individual who seeks enlightenment both for him or herself and for others. In fact, option 2 is correct. Bodhisattva is believed to be somebody who has actually delayed his own salvation for the sake of salvation of everybody. <coughs> compassionate. Bodhisattva means compassionate. An empathic sharing the sufferings of others and Bodhisattva is actually the greatest characteristic. I mean, compassion is Bodhisattva's greatest characteristic. Bodhisattvas take four vows, expressing a strong determination for the happiness of others. I vow to say them, I vow to master them, I vow to study them, and I vow to attain it. The four promises Bodhisattvas give. Save, master, study, attain. Option 3 is correct. Okay. This was basically a question coming from your newspaper. There was an article in Indian Express back in November 2022. Which are with reference to Jagdish Chandra Bose's contribution to science. Which of the following statements is or are correct? He invented the crescograph, a device for measuring the growth of plants. He did path breaking work on the millimeter range wavelength microwaves he holds the first patent in the world for a solid state diode detector used to detect electromagnetic wave select the correct answers using the codes given below 1 and 2 2 and 3 1 and 3 1 2 and 3 Jagdish Chandra Bose. Okay, sure, Kavita. By the way, guys, one thing I'm being very, um, I, think, I don't know if I've told you this. Finally, I'm doing a full fledged marathon Viceroy's series all the way from 1861 to 1947. And uh, we will be doing this on this uh, Sunday, 5 o'clock. Viceroys of India. A free session karenge yahi, YouTube pe. Then we can take the classes on YouTube. Why use something else? Okay. Answer is actually D. You are right, Kavita. Perfect. Bose holds the first patent for solid state diode detector used to detect electromagnetic waves. He was averse to all forms of patenting through and uh, patented the diode only due to pressure from his colleagues. I mean, he was actually against patenting stuff. Jagdish Chandra Bose discovered the wireless communication and generally known as father of the radio science. He also invented the crescograph, uh, um, 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 a, um, a tool or a measure for uh, plant growth and uh, he did path breaking work in millimeter range wavelength microwaves. In fact, Bose Institute 1917 was established by him at Cambridge University, the J.C. Bose Institute for Modern Research. He only established in Cambridge University. The former princely state of Tripura in northeastern part of India was ruled by which dynasty? Manikya, Ahom, Haihaya, Nagavanshi. You heard about the Tipra land? Tipra land movement. There is a question in reference to that. <coughs> uh, 
आंसर 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 इट वाज मानिक्य डायनेस्टी त्रिपुरा वाज यूज्ड बाय मानिक्य डायनेस्टी सो रिमेंबर दिस ऑलवेज मानिक्य डायनेस्टी दे हैव बीन द डिसेंडेंट्स ऑफ मानिक्य डायनेस्टी हैव बीन instrumental in the tipra land philosophy the, the entire purpose the entire idea is to reestablish that old uh, tipra land reestablish that old uh, manikya kingdom the official language of the indian union is hindi and english hindi and devanagari script hindi and any other regional language none of the above official language of uh, indian union गई भैंस पानी में पार्थ यू राइट हिंदी इन देवनागरी स्क्रिप्ट इज द ओनली ऑफिशियल लैंग्वेज ऑफ द इंडियन यूनियन इंग्लिश इज ओनली सब्सिडरी ऑफिशियल लैंग्वेज दैट टू एज पार्ट ऑफ ऑफिशियल लैंग्वेज इज एक्ट नाइनटीन सिक्सटी सेवन ओके आंसर इज डी बी आर्टिकल थ्री फोर्टी थ्री क्लॉज वन ऑफिशियल लैंग्वेज ऑफ द इंडियन यूनियन शेल बी हिंदी इन देवनागरी स्क्रिप्ट we have official language we do not have a national language we have an official language article 343 clause 1 <laughs> article 345 says the legislature of the states may by law adopt any one or more languages in use of the state 347 says president has the power to recognize any recognize any language as an official language of the given state 350 a says instruction to mother tongue at primary stage 350 b special officer for linguistic minorities article 351 power to union government for development of hindi language so no puja we do not have two official languages we have one official language with additional subsidiary official language be very clear on this on legal terms constitution does not say two official languages aupcharik bhasha ek hi hai hindi devanagari mein likhit hindi in devanagari script consider the following statements regarding the indian council for cultural relations it's an autonomous organization of the government of india involved in cultural exchange with other countries and their people it was founded by maulana abul kalam azad it can issue binding orders to promote indian culture like making it mandatory to play indian music at airports and railway stations which of the above statements is or are correct 1 and 2 2 and 3 1 and 3 1 2 and 3 quite it would be quite interesting to see the answers answer is a 1 and 2 only obviously nobody can mandate anything right exactly correct yes 
Indian Councils for Cultural Relations is actually an autonomous organization of Government of India. It is involved in developing India's global cultural relations, essentially through cultural exchanges with other countries. It was founded on the 9th of April 1950 by Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, the first Minister of Education of Independent India. Ministry of Civil Aviation has actually written to Indian airlines and airports in country asking them to play Indian music following a request from Indian Council for Cultural Relations. So only it can be a request, it can't be a mandate. Got it? It can't be a mandate. Mandate means a compulsory order that can't be happening. Which of the following statements is or are correct about uh, Sri Arbindo? He, asso he associated with Anushilan Samiti of Bengal. He was arrested under the Alipur conspiracy case. He edited several newspapers, including Bande Matram. Select the correct answers using the codes given below. One and two only, three only, two and three only, one, two and three. Sri Aurobindo. Answer is A. Yes. Arbindo was an Indian philosopher, yogi, Maharshi, poet, Indian nationalist. He also edited newspapers like Bande Matram. He joined the Indian National Movement for Independence in 1912, was one of the, its influential leaders and then became a spiritual reformer introducing his visions on human progress and evolution. He is associated with Anushilan Samithi and was arrested under the Alipur bomb conspiracy case. In 1926, with the help of his collaborator um, Mira Al Fasa, referred to essentially as the mother, he founded the Aurobindo Ashram. Eventually, this is what today we call Auroville near Pondicherry, the Aurobindo Ashram. Which of the following is famously known as Angkor Wat of Northeast? Yes, Pondicherry may Auroville, yes. Ang Angkor Wat of the Northeast. Yes, Unapati is yes, also commonly known as the Angkor Wat of the Northeast. It's basically currently under the UNESCO World Heritage Prospective List from India. And uh, Government of India and ASI both are working um, and investing lakhs of rupees to preserve this uh, Shiva or Shaivite rock carvings and images on this temple. Yes, Tripura Kipas, precisely. Tripura Kipas, yes, yes. Tripura Kipas. The Angkor Wat of the Northeast. See, original Angkor Wat is in Cambodia. Okay. The original Angkor Wat is a god complex or devo de devotional complex in uh, Cambodia. Regarding the taxation system of Krishna Deva, the ruler of Vijayanagara considered the following statements. The tax rate on land was fixed depending on quality of the land. Private owners of workshops paid an industry is tax. Which of the following above statements is or are correct?
Good morning, Vanilla. Yes, the tax in Vijayanagara state was actually fixed on the basis of quality of land. And exactly, the, even everybody had to pay tax. Land revenue was the primary source of income in the Vijayanagara kingdom. Land was divided into four categories. Wetland, dry land, orchards and woods. Usually the share was one-sixth of the produce general and the rates of the land varied according to the type of crops the type of soil the method of irrigation etc so statement one is definitely correct now besides land tax there were many professional taxes which were actually imposed uh, they were shopkeepers farm servants workmen posters, shoemakers, musicians, there was tax on property, there was tax on grazing, there was tax on houses, commercial taxes consisted of levies, duties, customs on manufactured articles of trade. In fact, private owners of workshops also paid taxes. The most unique was there was even at one point there was even marriage tax. There was tax on the amount of money you spend on your marriage. So, tax was a very important activity in Vijayanagara state, that you always remember. Okay. <coughs> Guys, for today, that's it uh, in this session. We've done comparatively less number of questions. From tomorrow, we'll be introducing IR. Um, international relations and uh, we'll also be doing um, um, current affairs not just history but an overall complete explosion of current affairs and current affairs based questions okay that's it in the session today from me so you can uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel just 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 click on the subscribe icon follow me also join my telegram group plus students and all the information will be there on this particular channel. Thank you. You have a nice day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Morning, 8 a.m.